There it is. Piranha 3D. That's right. Can't you see it? It's in 3D. No, it's really not. And I'm not a member of a progressive rock band from the 80s. Yeah. No, these are the real D 3D glasses they give you. I'm sure everybody's familiar with these now. These, This kind of 3D rocks. The real D. There's a little pouch it comes in. Okay, guys. Post-viewing thoughts on Piranha 3D 2010. And as always, you got the little trusty Coca-Cola there on a nice hot summer day. Oh, sweet nectar. Hmm. To all my YouTube peeps. Okay, guys. Post-viewing thoughts on Piranha 3D. <clears throat> Overall, an enjoying an enjoyable experience. It's more of an event, kind of an event movie. It's not a. Uh, it, I kind of came away, and just before I get too far into it, guys, as usual on the post viewing thought videos, there's going to be a lot of spoilers in here. So if you don't want to hear spoilers before you go see the movie, turn it off now. But come back and watch it later. And uh, if you want to watch the rest of it, don't mind about spoilers. Rock on. Here we go. Um, it's more of a. I came away from it feeling like it's more of an event movie. It's it was an enjoyable movie. Do not expect a whole lot from the script. You already knew that going into it. It wasn't going to be a very intelligent script or anything like that. It's basically taking the idea from the original by Joe Dante, which I like by the way, and uh, recently acquired on the the new Roger Corman's classics DVD. Check it out when you have time. Um, but overall, I came away from it having the same feelings as though I had just seen the My Bloody Valentine remake in 3D, which I thought the 3D was pretty decently applied in that movie in a fun way. I came away having the same feeling. The, you know, the script was crap, the acting was crap, but basically it was an enjoyable experience. You want to go see this with friends. You want to see it with a pack of buddies or something. To enhance the... Uh, the viewing experience that is. Overall the 3D was good. Um, the CGI was not that good. The practical effects were great. I really enjoyed the practical effects in this movie. All I can say is Nicotero, Nicotero, Nicotero and old Mr. Burger were hard at work in this one because there's tons of practical effects in this movie and I felt in my opinion they were done pretty good as far as fish bites and all this all the wounds that the piranhas the prehistoric piranhas inflict in this movie. Tons of blood in this movie. And they didn't really pull too many punches. You can tell the MPAA has kind of loosened up a little bit on this movie. Uh, not only for that, but for, uh, I mean, it's gore galore in this movie. There's uh, all the things you would expect in a spring break movie. They truly capture the wildness of spring break in this movie because it takes place around a spring break festival in a, in a fictitious lake in Arizona. I think they filmed this in Lake Havasu, uh, Arizona or Nevada. I can't remember where that is. Ge ge I was never a geographical whiz or anything, but uh, I believe that's where they filmed this movie. Beautiful locales and uh, a good mix of CGI, but, but there's more practical in this practical effects in this movie than I thought there would be. So that was the surprising, refreshing feature of the movie that I really enjoyed. Um, overall, not too bad as far as uh, acting is what you would expect in this type of movie, a summer kind of popcorn movie. But there are a number of name actors in this movie that I didn't I didn't go to IMDb before I went to see it. I've kind of tried to adopt that rule because I have a better I usually have a better viewing experience when I don't know everything about the movie before I go in there. Huh, who knew? Um, basically, it's got Elizabeth Shue in it. Uh, Ving Rhames plays a part in the movie. Uh, Richard Dreyfuss from Jaws fame does does a quick cameo in the movie. Very quick, by the mind, mind you. He doesn't do any acting. I don't think he even says any lines. <laughs> um, Eli Roth does a cameo. And i got to stop and just say, Eli Roth in this movie, is he's kind of in his element. Um, you know, it's just one of those deals where if anybody they could have picked to be the bikini contest judge and DJ kind of guy, it should have been Eli Roth. And i got to say, hands down, Eli Roth's death scene in the movie is my favorite. I won't tell you how he gets it, but just the way it's implemented, it's truly practical effect, and it's just awesome the way they do it. I just, it, it looks real. It's great. Um, I just, like I said, uh, I would probably recommend going and seeing this flick uh, with friends. Don't expect too much in story-wise. Story just relax. Get you a Coke. Get you something to drink. Um... Go in there looking for a good time. Just 
you know, make it an event. Take some buddies, take some friends, relatives, whatever. Um, the story, just going over, if you haven't ever seen the original, shame on you. You need to go watch that one first. But uh, it centers around the basic same storyline. And what I like about this remake, as opposed to other remakes that are just pure crap, that we've all had to be subjected to in the last few years, this one could play out as though it's just a, a loosely linked sequel instead of a remake. And I know it sounds kind of goofy and everything, because I know it's got the same title and everything, but if you think of it in that terms, after you, after you watch it, you'll probably think the same way. I don't know for sure, but I came out of there thinking, man, they could have just called this one like Piranha 2010 or something, you know, just like a sequel to the old one, because you don't have to see the old one to really know you know, anything about this one. That's why I think this one's going to be probably a little better than average. But as I was saying uh, before I got interrupted there, the uh, this movie, as opposed to other crappy remakes, basically in my opinion, it's going to it's going to have a pretty good, I don't know, kind of slight rewatchability factor to it, mainly because it's it's kind of a it's a fun movie to watch, especially with friends. I went by myself, and there was only about a handful of people there when I went to see it, and I got to tell you, we were all cutting up about the same jokes in the theater, so you. You're gonna have a lot of camaraderie whenever you go, even if you don't know the people. You're gonna have a lot, of, a lot of people gonna laugh at the same jokes in the movie. Don't take it too seriously, guys. And even if you don't like Piranha or Underwater Jaws movies, that type of thing, you probably would want to watch this movie just once, uh, just to say you've seen it, if anything. But uh, I think this one will probably have a little bit better rewatchability than most of the remakes. I think I'm talking in circles here, but uh, as I always do in these post-viewing thought videos. Um, because I haven't really gotten at home and soaked up all the knowledge about the movie and everything. There's a couple other name actors that are in the movie. Their names escape me right now, but uh, you've seen them in other feature films. And Like I said, it's just a good adventure ride. The story basically centers around... Uh, I, I need to get back to this. The story centers around... Um, there's a crack that opens up under the... Uh, a remote spot of the lake where this prehistoric underwater lake that was underneath it um, lets these prehistoric piranha that have been extinct for a long time, millions of years or whatever. Christopher Lloyd's another one that's in this, you know, the, the real wild scientist guy from Back to the Future and other films, uh, comedian taxi fame and stuff. He plays this scientist that kind of tells them where these uh, piranhas came from. and They're basically an ancient species that's been... Uh, extinct for millions of years or something like that but anyway uh, they're not indestructible you can kill them and everything and they kind of leave you with a cliffhanger about their origins and stuff and I won't ruin that part of it I'll let you guys enjoy that um, which I, I don't know I thought that was pretty funny um, Christopher Lloyd in this movie though he looks like he's about ready to keel over he, he's I don't know whether he's I haven't checked up on him I don't know whether he's just hit hard times or gotten older or just got a lot of health problems or whatever but you can tell they were letting him act around his health problems. But he's still a funny guy, I'll say him not say anything bad about the actor or nothing, but um, overall, enjoyable experience. If you like horror movies, you're gonna like this one. If you like booty in your face, dancing in your face, you're gonna like this one. If you like boobs galore flying around on skis and all kinds of stuff in there. I mean anything remotely close to spring break, you're gonna like these kind of movies. You know, just a wild party going on and then Havoc ensues kind of storyline. You're going to like this movie. So check it out, guys. That's been my roundabout uh, post viewing thoughts on Piranha 3D. Go watch it in 3D. Don't watch it in 2D. It, you, you def this is a movie that's definitely shot for 3D. It's not like, uh, what was it, Clash of the Titans that was re retro converted into 3D just for the effect. Um, this one definitely has a lot of in your face 3D stuff. There's my, yeah, there's my 3D fingers coming at you. Uh, Anyway, guys, take care, draw your own conclusions, get out there, see Piranha 3D, and have a good time. Arr, arr, arr.